Hey guys, how's it going you guys? Sam from Taku back again with another anime news roundup for this previous week, bringing you all of the news in the anime genre that I found interesting. We're going to hop right into it, but if you are enjoying the videos, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and we'll move right into the news. So we're going to touch on a little stuff that I mentioned in previous videos, starting off with news that we did miss from E3. We now officially have a you know semi-release date for the upcoming game Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. The new action RPG game from Bandai Namco just got a sweet little trailer during the Microsoft press conference last Sunday. Along with seeing the first little bits of gameplay, we now know the game will launch in early 2020, which is nice because it's actually one of the few games that said early 2020 instead of just 2020. The game will include English and Japanese voiceovers, which is great. I'm a dub fan myself, and it will support Spanish and Brazilian Portuguese subtitles. The game, honestly, I don't know how I feel on it yet. I'm not a big RPG guy. The overworld stuff, like when he's traveling, it looks very clunky and just okay. That being said, they did show a little bit of gameplay from the boss fights, and it looked really, really good. It reminded me a lot of the Ultimate Ninja Storm series, which makes sense because it is being developed by the same company, CyberConnect2. So, fingers crossed, the boss fights from the Ultimate Ninja Storm series were some of my favorites, so I'm sure they'll do a great job with that, but I don't know how I feel about the overworld RPG things. And then, remember how I said, I think it was a couple weeks ago now, where Food Wars is going to be ending soon? Well, it has officially ended. This previous week has marked the end of its run in Weekly Shonen Jump. Now, you would think that would mean the series is ending, no more, but it actually is going to be getting three more chapters in Jump Giga magazine. The three new chapters will be titled Shokugeki no Sama, which is the series we all love and enjoy, but it'll be colon Le Dessert. The first chapter in its new upcoming home will be releasing on June 27th, so it's not too far away, and it'll be nice because the series in the Weekly Shonen Jump, I keep up with it weekly, and it didn't really end in the best place for me. I don't know how most people feel about it. But weird place to end. I knew a deadline was coming up. I mentioned in a previous news video. So it's like I kept reading chapter after chapter after chapter. Being like, okay, they've only got a couple chapters left. It's like, I don't know how they're going to end this. There's still a lot they need to do. And then they just did a hard stop. Like right in the middle of something. At least that's what it feels like to me. So I'll definitely be checking out the last three chapters. I'll be marking that off my list as a completed manga. And, you know, best of luck to whatever the creator of Food Wars does next. And then along with it ending its run in the Weekly Shonen Jump, they did add one little special for Food Wars to tag on to this last story. It will be getting a fourth anime season come October. So October is starting to be a really busy month. The new fourth season will be titled Shokugeki no Sama Shin no Sara, which translates to the Plate of God, which will be sweet. Uh, hopefully this will finish out the big main series storyline. The storyline after, I don't want to spoil what happens if you haven't seen the anime, but once this big arc, the big main arc that's been following this whole time ends, it doesn't, it doesn't go well after that. It kind of reminds me of Fairy Tale where towards the end it just spiraled downward so it'll make sense if they stop here right when everything gets done with the battles that they're having they do a hard cut maybe make a nice finish there and then just don't come back to it i i, I mean i can't think anybody would be too mad with that and then you know how i mentioned that october is going to be quite a busy month now that we have shogugeki no sama joining the ranks of many other really good animes coming out that month we now know We've known this for a while. My Hero Academia is going to be airing that month as well, but its premiere date will be October 12th. And a big thanks to the website for the My Hero Academia manga. They posted a sweet, sweet trailer with some new scenes. It looks like some stuff that's maybe not even in the manga is going to be in this season. And then a cool little poster to go along with the upcoming season announcement. So I know My Hero Academia is really huge. I'm still loving it. The manga arc is in right now. I find really entertaining. I said last week when we talked about My Hero Academia. So I'm looking forward to this and this upcoming arc for the anime. You guys will not be disappointed. It is really, really good. Now moving on to a whole slew of anime expo announcements. Starting off, we had Funimation. Funimation announced on Friday that the creator of the Fire Force manga, Atsushi Okubo, as well as the editor for Fire Force, Megumi Suchia, will be appearing at Anime Expo for a panel that will premiere the anime's English dub as well as talking about the new anime adaptation which sounds like a really unique panel if maybe you want a little bit of insight on what it's like to get an anime adaptation from a manga i don't know why they wouldn't maybe have them like show the japanese anime since you know they're both from japan but i guess it is an american convention but it's an american convention for japanese cartoons so yeah i don't know who draws the line there i, I imagine a lot of people would rather see the japanese i i would like to see they should do a poll at this year's Anime Expo and see what people primarily watch their anime. And I bet a huge chunk of them is going to be subbed. So it's a weird choice for dubbed, but it would be a cool panel nonetheless. I am sure it's going to be really good. And we're just going to keep rapid firing out these Anime Expo announcements. The website for Anime Expo announced on Tuesday that it will host the director of Sword Art Online Alicization, Manabu Ono, and character designer slash chief animation director, Shingo Adachi. They will both be appearing in a panel alongside some of the cast from the English dub of the series. So it's a lot like the Fire Force panel. Um, but you know, like we talked about last week, I a big fan of all the sword art stuff. 
I'm in the same buzz as everybody else. The second part of the first season was not very good, but the rest of it, I totally get on. I, I love Shonen trash stuff. So this is a pretty cool guest to get. Normally I don't watch stuff until it's done, but I have actually watched Alicization because I thought it was done at 24 episodes. I didn't realize they're gonna go into a whole nother arc after it, which is crazy. So it'll be another neat look into how it is to do an anime. And then just when you thought we ran out of guest announcements for Anime Expo, you were wrong. In an announcement posted Thursday to the Anime Expo website, we now know that the Promised Neverland's anime director, Mamoru Kanbei, and voice actress, Sumiri Morohoshi, Maya Uchida and Maria Ise will attend the convention as guests as well as appear in a special panel alongside the English dub voice actresses. I don't know why I put their names in there. Jesus Christ, it's hard to pronounce. And this is pretty cool because a lot of the news stories that I'm covering this week, it's kind of stuff we've already talked about in other news videos. In one of our previous videos, we talked about the rankings of how manga is doing over in Japan right now. And if you saw that, you would know Promise Neverland is doing really, really well. So it's not super surprising that that would translate to the anime doing really well and the Japanese voice actresses making a trip over. I've personally been stuck in this lull with the manga. I started it right when it came out and I kept up, kept up, kept up, but I would much rather let it build up and then read it all. So I think at this point, I'm just going to wait for it to be done. And then I'll either, if the anime is farther than that, I'll hop on the anime train or I'll just read all of the manga all the way through. But if you're going to anime expo, let me know. This is seeming like a lot of really special guests and a really like almost must see panels, especially if you're someone who watches most of the stuff that airs each season. So if you're going, let me know how many of these panels you can actually make or what the lines are like. I'm sure it's gonna be crazy. Uh, me and all the boys, we're all planning to go, I think on a Sunday. So we'll be there. If you do see us come and say hi, um, but I won't be doing any panels. I'll just be walking around the floor and buying tons of stuff. And then the last bit of Anime Expo news this is pretty much just the Anime Expo news video for the week. Funimation announced last Friday that they will be holding a special premiere for the fourth season of My Hero Academia at Anime Expo on July 6th, which if you didn't catch in the previous story that we touched on right at the start of the video, this is an incredibly early screening. The upcoming season we now know starts October 12th. So we're going to get at least an episode, probably two. You're going to get at least a couple episodes way early. So that's a, it's actually pretty insane that if you see these episodes, I'm just going to guarantee one. I don't know how many episodes are going to be showing. But if you see them now, you're going to be way ahead of the curve and everybody else is going to have to wait all the way till October. I mean, this is a pretty big get for Anime Expo. I think they premiered the movie last year, so this is not completely out of the ballpark. But a really huge show like My Hero Academia, to get that early of a premiere, big ups. And moving on away from Anime Expo news, we do have a couple news stories that we're going to talk on on the end here. And this one falls under the category that I feel like it's news I've heard multiple times that I hope I don't have to hear again. The Black Lagoon manga is supposed to finally resume this September. The official Twitter account for, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say this, Shoga Kukon's monthly Sunday GX revealed that Ray Hero will resume the Black Lagoon manga in September with, quote, more surprises planned, which, fuck yeah, I love the anime so much. The manga originally went on hiatus in early 2014, only resuming in May of 2017, but then it ended up going back on hiatus just this last August. And, you know, this is one I don't read the manga at all. Like I said, I really do like the anime, so I just hope it continues so we get more anime. And this one is special for me. I don't know how I came to the decision, but I watched this dubbed and the dub is really, really good. I would highly recommend it. Even if you've seen it subbed, try watching it dubbed. You won't be disappointed. I just want to throw that in there. I know he's also working on a new manga that just started, I think. The first chapter just came out this week. So big welcome back to author Ray Hero. And I hope this is the last hiatus for a really long time. Best of luck. And moving on to a hilariously smart idea. The voice actor for Gilgamesh from the Fate series Tomokazu Seki has recorded an audiobook retelling the epic of Gilgamesh. So Tokyo's Ancient Orient Museum is releasing this new version as an audiobook and app to be released this July. Along with recording this new audiobook, Seki also recorded the audio guide for the museum's Gilgamesh exhibit. He had stated that while he had played Gilgamesh in games and anime, he wasn't familiar with the character's origin story, so reading it aloud killed two birds with one stone. Which, I mean, you could not have thought of a better combo that would work so easy. You already have a mega popular series worldwide, really. They put in a permanent Gilgamesh exhibit into the museum, and then they record an audiobook of him retelling the epic of Gilgamesh. I mean, that's just like whoever pitched that idea, I, I hope they got a promotion, honestly. And then we move on to the last bit of news for this week. We've now officially gotten a first look at the upcoming anime, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex 2045. You may see it, Ghost in the Shell, SAC underscore 2045, but it is the new official... 3D CG Ghost in the Shell anime set to premiere next year. The small tease we got is a new visual of Motoko Kusanagi herself from the upcoming series. The series will feature characters designed by Russian illustrator Ilya Kushinov, 
who has previously designed characters for the 2019 film Birthday Wonderland. The anime is being made by Kodansha and Production IG and will be getting two 12 episode seasons with Kenji Kamiyama, known from the Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, directing one of the seasons, and Shinji Aramaki, who is known for the anime Appleseed, directing the other. And this is one that I'm really cautiously optimistic about. I love the like original Ghost in the Shell standalone complex series, but I'm so anti like this 3D CG movement that's making its way into anime. I it just it looks ugly. They do the dumb frame rate thing where they're like, oh, we're trying to make it look a little more like anime. But it's like anime doesn't look like that stupid frame rate thing. Just make it smooth. And, you know, I didn't watch Ghost in the Shell Arise, which I think is another one. And I don't even know if it's good. It's like I just straight tuned out of it. Um, but the one thing that is pulling me back in is it seems they have a really good team. They're bringing back the director of Standalone Complex. So it could be worth watching. Um, the one outlier for me in this situation is I so I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan as well. And I put off watching the Star Wars The Clone Wars series, which had that same 3D CG style. Because I had watched the one done by the Samurai Jack creator, and I was like, that was fucking awesome. And then they announced they're going to do this shitty 3D CG one. And I was like, I just, I can't be fucking bothered. So I put it off for a really long time. I think I waited until it was done. And then I finally, I was like, okay, everybody's saying really good things about it. I'll fucking check it out. And I was blown away. And after I made it through a few episodes, I watched the movie, watched a few episodes. Yeah, you couldn't, can't really notice anymore. You get used to it. So if the story is good enough, I'll check it out. But I really do not like the art style. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. It could be another Star Wars Clone Wars. Who knows? And that's going to be all the news I have for you this week. So hopefully you got your fill of all the new things coming to the anime world. Once again, my name is Sam from the channel Otaku. And I'll be doing these videos every week. So if you do like it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And we'll be back next Monday with another news video. Thanks for watching, guys.